Today's the day. We're going to take a tour of the lagoon, check out the equipment I run, and then see the livestock I have. It's some weird stuff. What's going on reefers? So my name's Blaine. This is the King Tide Corals channel. If you guys are watching, I want to thank you for stopping in and checking out this video because we're going to be going over my lagoon today. Also, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that came and watched the video last week and some people even subscribed. It's crazy. People are subscribing. I don't even know what to do with myself. I don't even know what to do with my hands. Anyways, today we're going to be going over the lagoon. My livestock's really weird, quirky, and fun, and I like the equipment I run as well. So stay tuned, check it out, and stay till the end of the video. You're gonna see some pretty weird stuff. Before we talk about livestock and equipment and that kind of fun stuff, let's talk about the tank itself. The tank is an innovative marine 25 lagoon, all in one unit. I've had this tank now for about five years, and I really enjoy it. It's a tank that's had a couple different themes, but this mixed reef is probably my favorite. Being an all-in-one unit, it's easy to move, and because I'm renting and I can't really settle down yet, I can't have a big tank, so this nano tank is definitely the move for me. Innovative Marine did a really good job with this tank, and I really enjoy it. A few moments later. Alright guys, because I run an all-in-one unit, I have to try and do my best to keep all my equipment in the back chambers, um, and with that being said, I have a pretty small footprint to work with. Uh, the intake chambers, I'm using two intake uh, media holders. They're three chambered media holders that I have just running filter floss right now. The reason for that is I'm just trying to catch organic material and any extra food or fish waste that's not getting caught up. Um, there's two, so there's one on the right side and one on the left. I have my skimmer here. I'll go into more details about that in a minute. This first section right here is my auto top off return. This bracket right here works to my light, which is right above the tank here. Working back down. This for this next tube right here, that's for my dose system. So that's for my apex dose dosing. And then this sensor right here is my auto top off. These four probes go to my apex. And then that's it for the back chamber there. Uh, it's super packed. Oh, also the return pump. It's just a stock return pump. I have it off for the video right now. I hate the thing. I need to fix it. I have another pump that's waiting right down here below and has been sitting in the box for so long and still needs to get into the tank. So something I need to do here in the future, but just the stock return and that's it for the back chamber. A piece of equipment I definitely feel like my tank needed was a skimmer, and with it being an all-in-one unit, it was kind of hard to pick what skimmer I was going to choose because I needed a nano one. After a bit of review and research, I chose the eShops Nano Skimmer. This one's pretty sweet, and it works hard. It's definitely doing its job for me, and you can tell in the collection cup, it's picking up a lot of stuff. When I was setting this thing up, I realized that about an inch and a half to two inches from the water line is probably its best position. So in my opinion, I really recommend this nano skimmer if you're running a small all-in-one unit. The first thing I'm going to talk about is my auto top-off unit. So I'm using a Duetto ATO unit. Um, this is a unit that I have on my other tanks as well and tanks that I've used in the past and I really like it. Um, there's things that can go wrong with these auto top-offs, um, horror stories that do happen. Um, I've had a snail cover one before, made the sensor go, and ended up filling the tank and overfilling it. Luckily, I was home, um, but if you have an ability to keep it away, as in, in a sump or in a back chamber like this, then you can be in a better situation. So my auto top-off unit is set back here. This side right here is the tubing that runs the ATO uh, pump and has the water coming from there which will go right into this back chamber section this blue sensor right here that's the sensor for the duetto as a whole so these units work their way down and they go directly to this canister uh, this canister is just a five gallon canister i have behind this plant here pretty simple nothing crazy um, not super aesthetically pleasing but it gets the job done um, and then back on the back side that's where the sensor and the power is all for the duetto but i'll be showing that here in a minute the next thing i want to talk about as well is my apex unit probes and my apex unit as a whole uh the apex unit's been great for me uh, i think it was a probably the best choice i could have made having a controller system for these tanks 
kind of just gives you a peace of mind. Um, so these four probes here are four different probes that are measuring things at all times in the tank and they're shown on your dashboard. So there's an ORP probe, there's a salinity probe, conductivity, there's a temperature probe, and there's also a pH probe. So these probes all do their readings and then send it directly to the head unit and then that goes to your dashboard. Um, it's a super slick system. I'll show a little bit more here later about my Apex unit as a whole, but right here in the back chamber, that's where kind of the magics happen and this is where the probes are laying. Another piece that I'm running with the Apex unit is the AFS, the automatic feeding system. I haven't personally used this a ton, so I can't give a huge review for it. Um, it's a great piece and it definitely serves its purpose. The thing is, is that because of everything that's been going on with the quarantine and COVID and all that jazz, I've been home a lot. So I've had the chance to really be home with the tank and do every single feeding. So I haven't had to use this, but in the future, this will definitely be helpful for vacations or work trips out of town. As for a cover for the tank, I'm running a top lid custom lid. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the mesh tops, but I wanted to make sure that I had a lid. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have anybody ditch shop. So I decided to get a custom one and I went with top lids and they went above and beyond, I think. Uh, they went out of their way to make sure I could get exactly what I wanted and have the right feel. So big shout out to them. I'll have a link in the description for their website. A um, couple things I added to the build. So I added a feeding door right here so that I can just drop in food as needed for the fish. Makes it super simple. Um, here's also another feeding door in a way. Um, it's a little cutout for the automatic feeding system. So when the feeding system retracts its way out, it then is over this little section and can dump the pellets in. Um, and then here in the back right corner, I did a single notch so that I could fit in the heater. Uh, the heater kind of is too big to fit here in the back. Um, I'm trying to find a way to make it happen, but as for right now, it's in the display and I don't mind. And funny thing too is this little guy loves it. And it's actually a spot I found him sleeping a couple nights. He'll tuck his way right in between those two suction cups. So we'll just leave it there for now. But yeah, anyways, really do like the lid. Really appreciate all the hard work Top Lids did to get me this thing. And yeah, it's done its job and it's making sure that everyone stays in their home. So in my opinion, flow can be super key in a reef tank. Um, for me, I'm running the Vortec MP10. This is a pump I've had for quite some time, but it's been pushing water and doing its job ever since. Uh, I think it offers the right amount of flow and controllability for the Lagoon, um, being a 25 gallon. It's a perfect size for this and the controllability gives me the chance to either bump it way up or bump it down. And I really like the old school MP10 controller. I still have my original MP10 controller and it's under the hood here, but I'll be showing that here in a minute. So the light I'm running for this tank is a new one actually that I just picked up. It's a Kessel AP9X LED. Uh, this system is pretty sweet, super sleek, a uh, brand new system that Kessel just put out. I really like the mounting arm and I like the look of it. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video of this here in the future about my review and what I think this light offers. Uh, for me, with the mixed refill, I think this thing's perfect. I think it really gives the right pop to all of my colors and all of my specimens in my tank, but I'll be getting into this in the future, so stay tuned. All right, guys, let's go underneath the hood now. And it might be a little cluttered, but there's a method to my madness. Right here in the front is my dose system. This is part of my Apex unit as a whole, and it's dosing Alpha Reef. This is a product that I really enjoy. Alpha Reef is great, it's from Tropic Marin, and honestly, it's what's helping run this tank so well. Right here is the tube that's dropping in the Alpha Reef as well, and this is the pump that's pumping it out. Tube runs all the way through and up. Right here is my energy bar for my Apex unit, and here's the head unit for the apex unit as well the apex unit is great and yeah it's a little cluttered down here lots of cords but once i can get a controller board build i think this is going to look a ton better right here is my ecotech marine quiet drive mp10 and this is my battery backup if i can tell anyone of you one big tip 
get a backup battery. The last thing you want to have happen is the power to go out and you start freaking out because you don't have anything to back up your system. You want to make sure that all these guys are happy and healthy, so having a battery backup is honestly a peace of mind. And this Ecotech backup battery can pump this MP10 for anywhere from 50 to 72 hours after a power outage. So that's pretty much underneath the hood. It's a little crowded, but in my opinion, it makes it work. Alright guys, we're done looking at the equipment. If you guys have any questions about what kind of equipment I run and my personal experience, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, let's start getting into my livestock. It's some pretty weird stuff. It's stuff that I've never kept before, and it's stuff you don't really see in home aquariums. So let's go ahead and check it out. Starting out on the rockscape, the left side is kind of busy, but that's because it really gets overshadowed by that frag rack sometimes. On the top, well, I'll talk about that here in a second. But the frag though, that's my teal branching hammer. I got this frag for five bucks. Yeah, it's kind of like a foot long from Subway, but it's way better, it's coral. To the left of that is my Koji Wade Pink Nephthia. This is a piece I have been searching and searching and searching for, and I hadn't seen it since probably last July. And Unique Corals posted this guy a couple weeks back and I couldn't say no. I'm excited to see the growth of it, and I'm also excited to follow along with one of my reefing inspirations, Inappropriate Reefer. He picked one up as well. A link to his channel will be in the description below. Another piece that I picked up as well was this fake invader Pictinia. You see it down on the left in the Nem Cup. Yeah, it's not a space invader, but a fake invader. I decided to separate this piece because Pictinias can be known to have some ridiculously long sweepers, and a local friend of mine, David, got a frag too, and he showed me what he did with his. He put it in his Nem Cup, and I had to steal the idea. I appreciate the reef hack, David. The neon green piece to the right you see, that's my long polyp toadstool. This is by far the biggest piece of coral in my tank. When she's spread out and happy, she's about 7 inches by 6. And also another fun thing about her is my clown's hoster. Without a Nem in the tank, they definitely pick the closest thing to it. The middle part of the tank, well, it's kind of empty, and I'm lacking up top there on that archway, so I sat down and got to thinking and used, yep, my imagination. And I thought possibly a Euphilia garden would be pretty cool up there. Looking at that branching hammer, I really like the way it looks up top, and I think it's getting the right par, as well as good flow, so with that in mind, I'm thinking I might go with the Euphilia garden up top. Let me know what you guys think. On the right side of the rock work, I decided to go with something I know and love, that being soft corals. In my opinion, soft corals get a bad rep in this hobby because they can be called easy or beginner, but in my honest opinion, they can bring some really great movement to a tank and some natural color as well. Starting on the top left side, I have a small frag of green weeping willow. I just got in a live sale recently and it hasn't fully acclimated to its new home, but with that being said, the polyps will make their way out, just give it time. To the right of that is my green Nephthia colony. I got this from a local reefer as a small cut the size of a quarter, and it's worked itself into a pretty big colony, and the green color really pops on this rock. Below that is my Grubbs Gorgonian. This provides some great movement in the tank, and I really do enjoy watching it sway back and forth in the MP10 current. To the left of that is a small frag of worldwide coral cabbage leather. I got this one because it had a wicked purple hue on the backside, and I do love me some soft corals. To the right of the Gorgonian is a Tyree Toadstool. It's not out and about today, but here's a video of it when it's happy and extending its polyps. Above that is one of my tank's new show pieces, the Tongan Yellow Toadstool. I finally pulled the trigger on the piece after I bargained with the owner of the local fish store and he gave me a good deal on it. The Toadstool is by far a showstopper now in the lagoon. Yeah, it's not a Fiji yellow weather, but it's pretty close from Tonga. Also, right below that yellow beauty is a heatwave mushroom, another score from a live sale. Let's work our way over to the frag rack up front. Working our way from left to right, we have an OG UFO Micromusa. I just got this piece recently and I'm super excited to have it. It's been passed down from reefer to reefer and at one point it was even in Sanjay's hands. To my opinion, this is one of my favorite new pieces and I'm really excited to try it. It's like the mini me, a can, you know? It's a baby A can. It's really fun and I'm excited for it. To the right of that are some awesome blossoms. I just picked these up and I'm just waiting for them to get out and start showing some color. To the right of those are some Cornbreads Mall Gods. Some pretty sweet pieces and I'm enjoying the growth on them. 
To the right of those are some oxides, another sweet Zoa, but they definitely bring the same kind of color as the cornbread, so I'm thinking about swapping them out for something else. And then to the right of those are zoanthids.com lizard wizards. This is a frag that I got on a live sale, and honestly, I haven't seen them anywhere else. Uh, they've definitely got a lot of heads on them, and the color from their mouse, the neon green, it's crazy, so I'm excited to see these grow out. And then finally, to the far right is the BSA sticker shocks. These are pretty much my favorite frags right now, and I kind of baby them. And in our honorable mention, we have the bottom right side of the tank. Don't mind the detritus floating around. It just got kicked up by one of the fish. On the bottom right, you see two zoa colonies. These zoa colonies are pretty sweet. Uh, one is a Scarface zoa colony, and the other is just a mariculture. It didn't have a name, but it's got some really good pink tone to it, so I'm excited to see it grow out. To the left of that is my pastel war coral. This is a really fun coral and I'm excited to see this grow out as well and make a big colony. Right above the war coral, these are two colonies of acans. One's a Tiffany acan and the other's a cherry bomb. These are two really fun pieces and some more addition to the LPS garden. All right guys, these are the three pieces I've been so excited to show you and I'm really excited to tell you about them. So starting on the left hand side, I just got two new Maxima clams. I picked them up from Pacific East Aquaculture and when they came in, they looked great. And honestly, I think they're taken to the tank pretty well. I kept a clam a while back, but it didn't work out well. So I waited, I've done a bunch of research and after some time of thinking about it, I decided to pull the trigger again. I ended up getting the two because well, it was too good of a deal not to and with shipping, I decided I might as well try. So with that in mind, I got these two Maximas. I feed them phytoplankton about every other day to make sure that they're getting enough nutrients because due to their size, they're not relying strictly on photosynthesis. But what I really wanted to show you guys is what's on the right hand side. This is my Christmas tree worm rock. It's really cool and it's really quirky. So what it is, is it's a piece of live rock that has a coral called Parietes on it that's encrusting over it. It's an SPS coral that has a symbiotic relationship with these bisma worms. They're like little feather dusters. They're really cool and they have some amazing color. So I wanted to show you guys these pieces last because, well, they're crazy. More on the Christmas tree worm rocks gonna come soon because, well, I need to be able to focus on them strictly and I think it's gonna be a pretty long video. So if you guys stay tuned on this channel, I'll be sure to update you guys on these pieces, especially the Christmas tree worm rock. Here's a little montage of my favorite piece. All right, all right, I know, I know. Finally, let's talk about some fish. I have five fish currently in the tank, and quite honestly, they all get along really well, other than the clownfish, you know, with their love trials. Out of the fish, I have five of them. There's two clownfish, a basslet, a dwarf angel, and a wrasse. The first fish we're gonna talk about are my clownfish. These clowns are a variation of the Red Sea clownfish. They're Spotsinctus clowns. They were the first fish in my tank, and they've been amazing ever since I got them in there. The two came from the same batch in the local fish store I go to, and they were about the same size. One has finally started to outgrow the other, and well, the bullying's kind of begun. I'll keep you guys updated throughout the pot process of them pairing. The next on my list is the Cherub Angel, or Pygmy Angel. This is a dwarf angel that comes from parts of the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. I know some reefers say that you shouldn't keep an angel in a reef tank, and I would agree, but I would say out of all the angelfish, I think the cherub's the closest thing to being reef safe. But don't take my word for it. Every individual fish is different and has its own personality. This angel well though, it's helped keep my nuisance algae in check in the tank, and I really appreciate its hard work. Sticking to that Caribbean theme, I added a chalk basslet. This is a great fish in my opinions for beginners. They're hardy and they take well to almost all systems. And this is a species of fish when added at the same time in a small groups, it can be kept in about a group of three or so. My chalk bass is an absolute pig though. And it's the first fish to food anytime I add it to the tank. 
I've really enjoyed having this fish, and overall, I would definitely recommend this species for any new reef keeping hobbyist. Finally, let's talk about the cream of the crop, the Hawaiian clean arras. This is probably my favorite fish in the system. I know I shouldn't play favorites, but I worked really hard to get this fish integrated into my tank, and I care about it a lot. This is a species that comes from, well, Hawaii, and a type of fish that assists in the cleaning of reef inhabitants by picking away at their skin, pulling unwanted pests off, and some dead skin mucus. When I saw this fish in the local fish store, I'd never seen one before in real life, and I had to snag it. Cleaner wrasses aren't the easiest to keep, but I will be doing a feature video in the future on this wrass and what it really took to get it into my tank. If you're interested about learning more about it now, go ahead and check out my thread on Reef to Reef. The link in the description will be below. Well, that's it guys. That's all the fish that live here in the King Tide Lagoon. Well, that's it guys and gals for the tour of the King Tide Lagoon. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys have any questions about the equipment that I run or my livestock, leave a comment down below. With that being said, hope you guys join the family, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned because next video we're going to be talking about my brand new light, the Kessel AP9X. Thanks guys. I don't know man, I love the lagoon, I don't know, comment, like, subscribe, I don't know man.